Oh, it says prepare. This is prepared. Okay, and we are live, everybody. All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I am K. Eric Jr. Uh, followed by Mackenzie and Austin. We are the Young Greens, Ohio, and we are here to talk about police, police in general. Um, first off, I would like to do a little introduction. Uh, just in case if you don't know us, I am K.A. Harry Jr. running for the 2021 Cincinnati City Council and also a co-chair of the Young Greens Ohio. Um, next, I would like uh, Mackenzie to introduce herself. Hi, I'm Mackenzie. Um, I am also a co-chair of the Young Greens of Ohio um, in Austin. Hello everyone, it's nice to meet you. Thank you for tuning in today. My name is Austin Bayshore. I am a Central Committee member of the Ohio Green Party representing Kent and Portage County. I am also a representative of Ohio for the International Caucus of the, or the International Committee of the Green Party of the United States. Sound good, sound good. So first off, thank you everybody that is uh, tuning in right now. And we're going to kick it off. We're going to kick it off, right? And we're going to ask a, a generic question. And it's about what is policing uh, to you? Uh, Mackenzie. Um, policing to me is basically controlling what people do, um, whether that be controlling what they do in regards to the law, uh, whatever you believe to be right, but control is what it is. Okay, sounds good, sounds good. And Austin, what is policing to you? There is two different types of policing. When I think of the word policing, I think of the legal matter, the legal issues uh, with surrounding police, such as our current system um, through taxpayer funding, through government agencies and stuff. And then also um, non-legal policing, such as person to person, um, cultural policing, um, saying what is allowed for men, what's allowed for women. Um, and like Mackenzie said, control, making sure people don't veer too far from the normal. Okay, okay. Now there has been serious of incidents for as police brutality um, throughout the whole United States and um, other countries. Now, far as um, the United States goes, what do you think is currently going on in the policing systems that we are seeing police brutality a lot? Uh, Mackenzie. Um, first of all, not enough training. Social workers have to get four years and take tests and all this um, other stuff. Nursing, same thing. Police, they get six months in the academy and then they're expected to go out there. That's the first thing. Um, second thing, it, the police were made to be racist. They were started to control people of color. And so the system, systematic racism. Um, and also um, the police who may not necessarily do the bad thing or shooting someone they do not feel comfortable going to other people and telling them because then they're afraid next time they won't get back up. Um, so it's like, it's a system of hush hush, can't tell you what, what someone else did, no accountability, that's what's going on. Okay. So Austin, uh, what do you think about the police brutality that's going on currently? I think policing in the United States are Police officers in the United States have way too many hats to wear. I think they are stretched incredibly thin for what they need to do. They are social workers, they are rescue relief, they are EMT, they are hired bodyguards, they are soldiers. They're wearing way too many hats. And when you do that type of thing, it is very hard to specialize in one or the other. Uh, so a lot of police officers are very good community activists. They're very good at keeping relations with community members. Other police officers more focus on 
issues surrounding like natural disaster relief and stuff like that, boating. So when you have those police officers who are more suited for other work going out there with a the gun and told to de-escalate a situation, um, they're not really prepared for that type of thing. So we need a decentralized system um, to help ease that as well as cultural competency, cultural competency training issues. A lot of police brutality stems from a lack of control, a lack of being able to understand what's going on, a very, very keen instances of inability to deal with mental illnesses. People who are having lived one of the lowest points of their life and they call the police and the police end up murdering them or their dog um, because there's no personal interpersonal training around mental illnesses. Okay, sound good, sound good. So my next question, I'm gonna start off with Austin first. Now the statement is defund the police. Uh, do you support it? And if you do, uh, why? And if you don't, um, why don't you? Absolutely, I believe in uh, diversion, diversionary tactics. The Los Angeles County or the Los Angeles Police Department (LAPD) has more funding than the entire military of North Korea. If you think about it, um, North Korea has nuclear weapons, submarines, all of that and they're declared public enemy number one. Meanwhile, one city's police department in the United States has more funding than their entire army. Uh, army, Navy, land forces, special forces, nuclear arsenal, everything. So I think there definitely needs to be some reallocation of resources in Los Angeles specifically, especially with their exploding homelessness population. That, con that city, that county has been ran by Democrats for how long now? <laughs> A multitude of generations, uh, one or two generations of people. So I do believe in taking police funding and moving it to other areas such as public health, public health issues, um, health care issues, care for, sorry, my cat is licking my microphone. Um, just taking care of people first before they reach that point to where the police need to be called. And life situations happen, life or death situations happen. Okay, okay. Well, shout out to everybody that is uh, tuning in right now. This is the Ohio Young Greens and we're talking about uh, police. Um, now, next is Mackenzie. Um, do you support the funding of police? If you do, why? If you don't, why not? Uh, yes, I do. Um, we've defunded our schools for years why can't we defund the police? Um, the conserve, a lot of conservatives love to argue, um, don't get mad at the police shooting your kids, teach your kids better. Okay, well, let's take some money from the police that oftentimes have way too much in the budget and let's give it to social services. Let's give it back to schools. Let's help the community then. If that's gonna be your argument, then take the billions of dollars that are given to the police don't you don't even have to take all of it just take even like half of it and you could give it back to the community if that's what is causing all this police violence then let's there's an easy way to fix it reallocate the funds as a school teacher i've been defunded plenty number of times and i've still done my job exactly same okay okay so ladies and gentlemen we have austin and we have mckenzie and I am K.A. Her Jr. Um, my next question is going to be, let's say the local governments or uh, state government don't defund the police. And what do you think they can actually implement to make policing better? Um, Austin. I believe cultural competency is something that we lack. In Ohio specifically, we still have some of the most seg racially segregated cities in the country and it's not a government institution that's segregating our cities it is the our economic institution and that's just as worse um, if not more worse than um governments in it with segregation because 
everyone loves our economic people love our economic system they're never going to fault capitalism and um, for our issues that we face today but we have in ohio a lot of police that do not come from the communities that they serve uh, we have especially in cleveland we have a lot of upper class rich white clevelanders becoming police officers and then being put in um, low income black and brown and indigenous communities to where they've never been there before. They don't know a single road name. They don't know where the hangout spots are. They don't know anything about these communities and they're told, hey, don't let them do crime. So I believe intercultural competency is extremely important. Um, getting out there meeting people um, as well as making our police training system completely different. In Ohio, it takes 32 weeks on average to become a licensed police officer. Um, and most of your police academy training is paid for, if not on around a few thousand dollars. Um, it takes six years and almost 50,000 US dollars to become a school teacher. And you're not given a badge and a gun and a license to kill. So I think our training system needs to be greatly improved with intercultural competency, um, limiting firearms training, if not making training longer, um, because most of our training for police officers goes to firearms training, not de-escalation practices. So making de-escalation practices a priority instead of firearm training, um, or making de-escalation practices longer than firearm training, and making our system to become a police officer more robust, so that those who are actually becoming police officers want to do it and are not there just to be on a power trip. Okay. So Mackenzie, let me ask you the same question. If um, the state, local, or um, any type of government uh, do not defund the police, how can our police get better? Well, first, I'm going to say if they do not do that, we should definitely all get very upset about that. But even if that doesn't work, then we need to, like Austin said, increase the training instead of six months make it at least two years like an associate's degree make them know where they have to learn how to um deal with all the diff different cultural aspects everything it takes more training to become a cosmetologist than it does to become a police officer so you literally can cut hair after two or three years but after six months, you can shoot a gun and you can potentially take someone's life. That's not okay. And so that's what I think they should do. Similar to Washington. Okay. Well, um, we have Mackenzie, we have Austin, and I am Kay Hurd Jr. And we are the Ohio Young Greens. And I believe we maybe have uh, time for two more questions, maybe one. But the next question is, um, now, do you support uh, police and schools? I'm gonna go to uh, Mackenzie. No, as only a psychology major at least, or you know, so don't really have much uh, stuff, credentials, but students need to feel safe. That is not good for their brain to have them be in fear because there's an officer with a gun right down the hall is not okay. That's not gonna, increase their education that's not going to make it easier for them to learn it's going to make it more difficult for them to learn and more difficult for them to want to go to school it's the same thing with teachers having guns no one in a school should have a gun or any weapon it's just not a good learning environment and it's detrimental to kids okay um, Austin, do you support police officers in schools? In short, no, but I understand both sides of the argument. I understand wanting to keep children safe. And a lot of people believe that having more armies, arms, having more weapons around makes us more safe. However, I want to say this is a specifically American issue. Um, also Israel, if you count them as a real country. Um, but the only two countries that have armed police officers in their school are the United States and Israel. We, as Mackenzie said, I would not feel safe 
with a police officer roaming my halls uh, with a gun. I believe this is going in the wrong direction when we talk about arming teachers, arming schools, putting police officers in schools. Um, my high school did not have a police officer. My high school did not have any form of security checks whatsoever. It was a school, small rural high school in Southeastern Ohio, like 600, 400 to 600 students total. So we never really had any instances, instances, but we need to be working on demilitarizing our society. Um, American society is so reliant on weapons, guns. There's so much violence in our streets. Um, pe women, people don't feel safe walking home. People don't feel safe even with the police around. So we need to be working on de-escalation practices, um, making our streets and our cities less violent with less police. Um, and I believe the first way to go about that is taking mental health seriously and then also making a living wage. A lot of people steal, a lot of people commit acts of theft because they have nowhere else to go. They have nowhere else to turn. They need to take care of their children. Their children need food, water, clothing, essential items. Um, and also people feel wronged by the system. When, when you see a lot of people stealing, like, of course we all don't need giant flat screens televisions, but when you see people looting those types of things, it's because they feel wronged by the system. They feel like they need to get back at somebody. So I believe combating poverty should be our first step instead of pol policing our schools, as well as taking care of mental health seriously to where we don't have any of these problems anymore. Okay, sounds good, sounds good. That was just Austin. All right, so um, I didn't give my, my answers uh, to different questions, but as far as police brutality go, I'm completely against it. I'm completely against any type of violence. Um, I am pro-police. Um, I don't really support the statement for as uh, defunding the police, but I do support reforms to making sure that uh, we, we are on the same page to make sure that People isn't getting criminalized for uh, petty things, uh, far as you know, of course, marijuana and, and other things. Um, but I, I don't want to see um, any type of race to get discriminated against, as far as uh, policing goes. So I am for for police, but I do want to see some changes. Um, like I said, I won't really support the defund the police. Uh, but that's just my take. I, I had a lot of police officers that was men, uh, mentors, uh, football coaches, and, and was able to talk to me throughout uh, different stages in my life. So um, that's why I'm for police. But I respect everybody's opinion. I respect everybody's values. And, and that's the good thing about the Green Party, uh, the Ohio Greens, uh, the Ohio Young uh, Greens. Um, we respect everybody's opinion, which is uh, great. You know, if you are against it, or whatever, we can always find a common ground. And speaking of common ground, how can we, a mix of all the uh, the drama and all the things that is coming along, how can we at least get along or um, uh, appreciate the people or the police officers that, that is doing great things as far as out in the community or um, out, you know, talking uh, to the uh, neighbors and uh, whatever the case may be, but doing good things. How can we acknowledge that amongst all of the bad things that we see as far as policing? Um, Austin. I think there are some good police officers, believe it or not. Yeah, I believe there are some ones that who actually care about their job, who actually care about the communities that they serve. Um, I do not believe it's kind of naive and childish to think that every single one is out there to kill you. Um, everyone out there is there for the bad reasons. I do believe there are quite a few good ones, um, but there also are quite a few bad apples in the bunch. Um, there are ones who go, who are machismo, go on power trips um, and stuff like that. But I believe um, sharing positive news articles about those police officers who are doing their job correctly. Uh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna praise people for actually doing their job, <laughs> for doing what they signed up for. Um, Cause you know, us millennials and young people are always told by the older generation that, oh, you guys just want participation trophies. So, so I don't wanna be doing that, but I want to make sure that people do know there are good ones out there. Um, also like the budget is extremely inflated um, and for what? For what? Do you really need new Tesla cars every two years? 
new Tesla police cruisers. Uh, our bridge is crumbling. <laughs> like, do you really need that? Um, do you need these giant automatic 50 caliber machine guns and tanks that look like they're straight pulled out of Afghanistan? Um, shouldn't be in Afghanistan in the first place. But do you really need those? If you really have the hearts and minds and the people actually support you, you wouldn't need those roaming the streets, would you? Um, so yeah, I think positive news articles, um, giving credit where credit is due for those that actually do their job and actually want to serve their community um, and making sure people know that they're, I don't wanna say the good one, but making sure people know that they're not out there for insidious reasons. They're not out there to hurt you. Okay, sounds good, sounds good. Now, Mackenzie, how can we acknowledge the good uh, police officers um, amongst of everything that is going on? Uh, similar to what Austin said, um, obviously not every single police person out there is there for a bad reason. Um, my dad was a police officer. He never shot anybody, um, thankfully. Um, but I also think it takes both sides being able to talk, not just the side automatically saying, oh, you want to defund the police, you hate them, or the other side saying, oh, all police are terrible. It takes both sides. They both need to talk, and we need to talk to come to a solution or else more people are going to get hurt by police. So, or more people are just going to get hurt in general. We don't just start talking and figuring it out. If we don't talk to each other, like people are going to start shooting at each other. Exactly. Pretty soon. And we definitely don't want that as a party of mm -hmm. nonviolence, a party of peace. Yes. We don't want any side to start escalating. That's scary. I definitely think talking would help a lot. And just because I want to defund the police does not mean I hate police. It just means I think our social services need more money. Not how hard. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate both of you guys answering the questions today. Uh, we do have a few minutes. Once again, this is the Ohio Young Greens uh, live stream. We're talking about police. Um, thank you, everybody that has tuned in so far. And uh, when people watch this later, uh, we appreciate you watching. But uh, while we only have a few more minutes, I just want one quick statement about policing. Um, and we can start with uh, Mackenzie. Just one statement. Um, one quick statement. Defund the police, build up our social services, and talk. We all need to talk to each other. That's my quick statement. Okay, okay. All right, Austin. When I ran for state representative in 2018, um, I ran in a very centrist district. And I think what hurt me the most um, in my campaign was on my campaign literature, I wrote jail killer cops. So I think that was the bad, bad way to approach it. Looking back now, um, almost three, three years later, um, it is true. If you do kill somebody, you need to be prosecuted like everyone else. Uh, but it's always about presentation, always about how you present yourself. Um, je writing jail killer cops on your campaign uh, brochure is not the way to go. So any green candidates watching this or watching this in the future, um, Please use the phrase police accountability. Um, but yeah, definitely like what Mackenzie said, we need to be able to recognize that not all, not everyone is doing things for insidious reasons, just like there are good teachers and there are bad teachers. Um, but definitely police officers do not need military grade weapons um, and going to other countries like Israel for training services. When we can do that, we can save money and do that here at home. Uh, so yeah, using that money for better reasons than sending 150 people from your local county police department to study from in a, the apartheid state of Israel. Okay, okay. And then my quick statement would just be, let's, let's find love, let's find peace in every situation. Um, we don't need no more violence. We don't need anything to hurt anybody. We just need to make sure that we, we care for one another and make sure that we find that love within ourselves to bring peace to each and everybody. 
I would like to say I appreciate both of you guys. Uh, Austin, we got Mackenzie. I am K.A. Her Jr. This is the Young Greens live stream right here, live on Facebook. Uh, and we talked about police. And I appreciate everybody that watched. Um, and also, uh, I would like to give a shout out to, of course, my mother, um, all the Greens, all the Young Greens, uh, Miss Anita. And uh, Austin, do you have anybody to uh, shout out? Before we end this. Before we end, I just wanted to wish Anita Rios well. She is, she's been a co-chair of the Ohio Green Party since 2000. Um, she's been a leader in our national greens and she's recently hospitalized um, due to an illness. Um, she's recovering. She's doing okay. Still has a little few side effects, but I'm just hoping for her quick recovery um, and that she is doing all right. Please send vibes, prayers, whatever you do, please send them her way. And also join the Young Greens of Ohio. If you live in Ohio, please. We want more people. All righty. And this will conclude our live stream by the Young Greens Ohio about policing. Thank you all.